Now looking at the particle-like properties of electromagnetic radiation or light, we understand that light is actually broken into small bundles of energy called a photon. So the smallest quantity of light is a photon, and the energy involved or associated with this photon is dependent on the frequency of light. And so the equation is, is that the energy of an individual or a single photon is equal to h nu, where h is um, <clears throat> Planck's constant, um, uh, 6.62 times 10 to the minus 34th joules per second, and remember nu is the frequency of the light. So we typically think about the energy of a photon related to the frequency of light, but remember we just saw that um, the frequency and the wavelength or, or light are directly proportional to each other and related to the wave, uh, the speed of light. So we can take this equation and solve for nu, the frequency, and we can come up with a, an equivalent equation that equates the energy of the photon to the wavelength of the light. So we can use any one of these uh, equations to find the energy of a photon of light. Um, and really we tend to equate the energy of the photon to the frequency, but it's also related to the wavelength of the light. So here now, by looking at these equations, we understand that the highest energy photons have the highest frequency. So high frequency light tends to be the most energetic and, and, and also have low wavelength. So high frequency, low wavelength means high energy photons. And uh, the opposite is true. That light with a low frequency and a long wavelength tends to be low in energy. So when we think about energetic light or electromagnetic radiation, x-rays is among some of the more energetic, uh, it has a very high frequency, so 10 to the 20th. If we equate this to radio waves, which are uh, virtually harmless or have no energy, it has a relatively small frequency of 10 to the 6. Light likewise, um, the wavelength of x-rays is very small, and we've already looked at the, the wavelength of radio waves as being uh, rather large. So this is why um, x-rays are dangerous. So uh, when you have an x-ray done, they typically put a lead sheet on you and the people leave the room. That's because x-rays are uh, high energy and they're so high energy they can actually uh, go through your body and damage DNA, whereas radio waves are not. So we are literally being bathed by radio waves right now. You know, there's so much of it, but it um, it's so weak in terms of energy that it really does no harm. So one of the classic calculations that we do, um, and you should be able to do, is to calculate the energy of the photon if you're given a wavelength or a frequency of a photon. So this is a very classic calculation here. So I give you uh, that we have a photon of violet light. So remember I can go and they have tables that equate the type of light to different frequencies. So if you just said violet light, I should be able to go and look at a table of the different types of light and say, well, violet light has a wavelength of about 410 nanometers. So I want to calculate the energy of this photon. Uh, one of the first things I got to remember is we talk about uh, light in terms of nanometers specifically because uh, it's, a, it's an easier number to use, but most of the constants that we play around with, so specifically here the speed of light and uh, Planck's constant, the unit in distance is going to be in meters. So you got to remember I don't need uh, my wavelength in nanometers, I need it in meters. So that's one of the, the main uh, uh, tricky parts of these types of calculations. I then I kind of I say do I have a wavelength or a frequency of the light? Here I have the wavelength so it's a little bit easier to use the wavelength uh, version of this in energy of photon. So H is Planck's constant, so I get that off the front of the exam. C is the speed of light, that's also a constant. And then now I need the wavelength in terms of meters. And the way I like to do it is if you just take the nanometers, so here 410 and just multiply by 10 to the minus ninth, that is this number in, in uh, meters. So if I just take the uh, wavelength and multiply times 10 to the minus ninth, that'll give you the wavelength in meters. So when you do this, um, I mean, you can look through and go through and do all the number crunching, but we end up with our energy, our energy needs to be in joules, and we get the energy of our um, one photon of violet light, which is uh, 4.58 times 10 to the minus ninth joules.